Hello, Oregon Synod. My name is Phil Hirsch, and I am delighted to be with you, in, even in this virtual way, to say hello and to share a little bit of what's happening around the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America uh, at your assembly. I have been to Oregon many times. I have relatives who live there, and so I'm very sorry I couldn't be with you uh, here today. This is what I think of when I've thought of Oregon and have visited many times over the years. It's so beautiful. I've at Mount Bachelor. I've been all over the state and visited uh, in, in so many places. And it's so beautiful. And I really enjoy the people. And this year in particular, I've been concerned. And the whole country has been uh, along with you. The whole church has been watching what's been happening with the fires and then the floods that have followed and uh, our hearts have been with you as uh, we've watched this tragedy unfold on top of tragedy and the racial reckoning that our nation has been uh, going through this year and we've watched in portland in particular what has been happening uh, there in a way of protest uh, and of um, and of the various reactions to it and uh, the ELCA stands strong and with you in seeking a just society, one where all the people of God are treated the way that God would ha uh, have us treat one another, as in the kingdom of God. And uh, we have also been, of course, watching COVID. And it is uh, peaking in many places around the country. And uh, we're watching Oregon very carefully, too. And we have been responding in different ways as a national church to these tragedies. And particularly in, in Oregon, uh, one of those ways has been with the COVID-19. We have been uh, raising uh, funds around the country to help uh, and um, to help uh, synods in whatever way you think is most important. And the Oregon Synod got a part of uh, one of these grants to, to help out. Some have used it to help in communities of color and people of poverty who have been hit the hardest um, because of COVID. Others have used it to help congregations respond um, by getting online and uh, beginning to worship uh, virtually uh, in a way that almost no one had done before COVID. We also have created this public health page, elca.org backslash public health. And there are all kinds of resources for you as a congregation to help meet this um, uh, changing and growing need uh, in our nation. We have uh, also, with Lutheran Disaster Response, made funds avail available to Oregon and to places all over the country um, to meet um, the needs that are arising, both from COVID, but also of the fires and the floods, all of the hurricanes that have um, this is come up from the south. This is really an unprecedented year. And in 2019, we received a total of $11.3 million for disaster response. Uh, and uh, of that, $72,758 came from the Oregon Synod. Yay, thank you. Uh, that's really wonderful. Really grateful for uh, that support, which has enabled us to help um, not only the Oregon Synod at times, but also our neighbors and friends all over the country and the world uh, to be a demonstration of the love of Christ at a time when people are hurting the most. Um, that's when uh, we as a church can gather together and be very present with people. You've helped to make that happen, and I want to say thank you. Uh, we've also been working together, Oregon Synod and the rest of the ELCA, to support efforts to alleviate hunger. Uh, and in 2019, that equated to $23.4 million. million. And, uh, and uh, that those funds have been used worldwide, both uh, some here in the United States to meet uh, particularly the growing hunger needs. And I'll talk about those 
in Oregon, uh, particularly in a moment, but also, of course, around the world. And um, the uh, Oregon has contributed to that, uh, in, to the amount of $245,546 in 2019 to alleviate hunger, both here and around the world. And uh, we have been um, working with uh, a few congregations in your synod in particular to meet hunger needs. One of them is Trinity Lutheran in um, McMinnville, Minville, Oregon, uh, that received a daily bread matching grant. And those grants are, um, are meant to and help, help congregations to raise money and to match some of those funds so that you can meet the growing needs of hunger in your community. A nativity in Bend, our Redeemer in Eugene, both also participated in Daily Bread matching grants the first year, 2019, which was our pilot year for this new program. Um, and there are new grants that have just been made available and there will be again some next year. So if your congregation is interested in that, you can find out more at elca.org. Also, Bethel Lutheran in Portland and Nativity in Bend are both receiving domestic hunger grants for particular projects that they're working on uh, you know, around hunger in their communities. Uh, we've been particularly interested in your Oregon Synod's stepping stones. Uh, your Bishop Lori Larson Caesar has, um, has been sharing this with us. Um, and I love this idea because it talks about um, scripture and practice that grounds us in the way of Christ. And, uh, and that, that idea of the, having a way to share with the world, the way of Jesus, the way that leads to justice and love and community uh, brings hope in the world. And you have to, you can't give what you don't have. And so to be sustained in that practice, um, to uh, respect one another, to do it sustainably. All of these things uh, I'm really excited about, to hear more at this assembly of what it is that your synod, your staff, that you are participating in. One particular one I think is really interesting is the, this last piece of shameless, fearless innovation. And uh, we experiment, collaborate, dream dreams, and see visions. We dare to make mistakes, fall down and get up again. This is the way of Christ now in the world. Our uh, world has turned so quickly and our churches have struggled to keep up with how our culture has shifted. It's the same message of Jesus, the same love, the same way, but the way it gets translated and spoken of in the world needs to change to keep up. And none of us can do this alone, but together as the people of God, we can figure some things out and learn how to communicate and connect with a new generation and people who are younger and more diverse than we are now, more ethnically diverse, more economically diverse, and um, more open to LGBTQIA. This is the, the hope, the work of the ELCA together, Oregon Senate, and all of us in collaboration. And it's interesting that the Oregon Senate and the ELCA each have received a grant from the Eli Lilly Foundation to work in this way. Um, the Oregon Senate has, uh, has helped the ELCA uh, overall in giving mission support dollars, which I'll mention again in a moment. But that help us to do things like to establish a new innovation lab in the ELCA. And look at what Bishop Eaton says here. The way people hear and receive the gospel is changing at an increasing rapid rate. The competitors of the gospel are many, but what hasn't changed is the liberating good news that we are loved and set free to serve our neighbor. The innovation lab gives us space to experiment and innovate in real time so that more people can know about Jesus and experience the love of God. What we need is a way to do this, a, a way to do it together, to have processes and to share ideas and what's working so that 
uh, we as a people of God, as Lutherans in the United States, can bear witness to this love in ways that are practical and bring more people along into it. This is always the challenge of the church. It was Luther who um, 500 years ago drilled back down to the purpose, the heart of it all is the gospel, and then innovated like crazy. He used the printing press. He translated the Bible into the vernacular of the people of it in German. He uh, brought in different kinds of music in order to, to reach people in ways that they hadn't been before. This is our great tradition that we share together. And I'm so excited to work with you as uh, the Oregon Senate and, and to continue to work with you uh, in this way. And I'll show you a couple of ways that we are uh, trying. One is uh, this strategy called Growing Young. And uh, there is a, a growing understanding of what it means to uh, work with young people in uh, both uh, in our church and in our society. This was a study that was done of churches across denominations around the United States that were disproportionately growing with young adults. And they asked, well, what do they have in common? And one of them is the basic most important thing is a clear message of, of Jesus Christ and empathy for the young adults who were in their communities. That empathy is the way to begin all of our efforts to listen, to hear what's going on, where people struggle, particularly young adults who are having the most difficult time in this moment of, of uh, COVID-19 in the United States, and along with the racial reckoning and along with the fires and the floods. It's a difficult time, especially for our young adults. I have three of them, three boys. Uh, who I live in Chicago, they're all over the country right now. But I know how uh, young adults are struggling and that they're looking for something to help them center and base and make understanding of the world. They may not necessarily be looking right now for an institution like a congregation or a denomination to be a part of. That's the part we have to do to make it real for them. So uh, to the work of the larger church, uh, Oregon has contributed in 2019, $388,665. That's the number that I have understood. I hope that it's correct. Uh, it's a very generous amount. It represents 42% of the mission support that your congregations have shared with the Oregon Senate. The rest of it goes to your Senate to help you, your bishop and her staff to walk with you in providing leadership uh, for your rostered ministers, for your congregations, to help you in every way that the Senate office uh, is, is able to help you. And uh, we also provide funding, uh, the ELCA, through, in part through the, the uh, grants that you have, uh, the funds that you have provided to us with everyone. We're able to um, uh, uh, provide some help provide some staff and that's uh, Melissa and Juan Carlos who are uh, part of a program we call directors for evangelical mission which help congregations all over the country to figure out ways to uh, to reach new people uh, and to um, to start new ministries and in Oregon there are a whole host of new ministries that have begun uh, uh, from the flame to wilderness way to story dwelling, story community in Oak Grove, all of these communities uh, have received funding from the uh, the national church as well as I'm sure from the synod and local ministries as well. Now, and some of them uh, are going to thrive, and some of them are may not thrive, but you won't know unless you you try. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm grateful to God for all of you who have been working on these new ministries. It's the most significant way to connect with new people is to have new ministries. Also, uh, you need leaders and uh, their ELCA has a fund for leaders that helps um, uh, uh, people who want to become uh, rostered ministers in the church, pastors and deacons, 
And uh, uh, last year we had $3 million in scholarships. And the, uh, <laughs> um, in the Oregon Synod, uh, the Fund for Leaders helped uh, uh, these five to, um, to attend seminary in uh, places all over, over the country. So Oliver and Dane, Rachel, Sienna and Lucas, and we're grateful for their willingness to pursue the calling of Christ uh, to serve in the church in this way um, through the Oregon. You also help to support missionaries that are serving all over the world. The ELCA had 118 missionary households in 45 countries and 60 young adults that are serving in a program called Young Adults for Global Mission, or sometimes YAGM is the, the expression that we use. And uh, they're uh, building relationships and community and expressing the love of God and community, community around the world. And the Oregon Senate has had a global presence. Uh, you're, uh, International Companion Synod is Poland. You have regional representatives in West Africa, Rwanda, and Madagascar. That's Anne and Willie. And um, Megan has been serving in Mexico, Cynthia in, and Rich, and Mark in uh, Tanzania. And so the work, the uh, ministry of the Oregon Synod is reflected and magnified and extended both in the United States, but also globally. Um, one other note, uh, we are um, um, having a, a together, a, 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 a gathering for youth. We do this every three years. It was postponed this year. Uh, it's going to be the same place, but a different year. Instead of um, uh, 2021, it's going to be held in 2022 in Minneapolis. And there we have about 30 or 30,000 uh, ELCA young, uh, young people, um, mostly high school students who come. And I'm sure that there are some from Oregon. Um, please plan to, to send uh, and come uh, to Minneapolis in July of 2020. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, lastly, uh, your synod uh, uh, contributes um, the time of uh, a volunteer, Sister Claire, who has been serving on what we call the Committee on Discipline, which you hope you never get called into uh, to have to, to be on. Um, however, it's really important that we have these kinds of committees in the church to um, meet issues of discipline when they arise. We all know of the disaster that happens um, in, for instance, uh, some of our Roman Catholic friends when you don't have the, the, uh, the proper system set up for discipline. So we're very grateful to Sister Claire for her serving on this uh, in this way. Finally, I just want to say thank you. Um, and I, I wish that I could be with you. Thank you for all that you do on behalf of the church. Thank you for your generosity to the ELCA as, as a whole. And thank you for your partnership, our, our work together. I, I know I'll be back in Oregon. And, uh, and when I do, I hope that I'll have a chance to see some of your congregations and, and uh, visit with you in some of your communities. I wish you well and enjoy the rest of the assembly.